Oh, I see us. Ooh. Yeah, I, 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 think, I think we're back. Hey, hello. It's us. All right, we are back. I'm not going to read that intro the third time. Come check <laughs> us out, Warble Tales, on our Twitter and Instagram to find out what we're up to. Uh, for tonight, spooky friends, introduce yourself to the audience, please. Uh, for the, oh, this is only the second time, but I am in a chair and I am Dwayne at Made of Kimchi on the internet playing Agatha Merriweather. Yeah. Is key, Truki Sama is Twitter. Uh, I am Richard Schwarm, the lawyer. Uh, is Mayor. Oh, hello, Mayor. Oh, hello, me. Is me. Is Mayor. Um, playing Alex. Hi. Small word good, big word bad. Is Devin is sort of sullied? Is Rip Pelter two peas? Is Dave Twin Dad tweets on Twitter? Is Cliff Reynolds Explorer? All right, and I am your storyteller keeper. My name is Rachel. Uh, Mayor, would you mind reading the recap and refreshing everybody about the hijinks y'all got up to two weeks ago? Yes, I can do that. The day has arrived. The day of Jackson Elias's funeral. After the assault, Mr. Schwarm slowly makes his way to the funeral. Cliff makes his way upstairs to rouse the buttons on the blower as Alex and Agatha search the bodies of Emily and the other droppers. In a fit of anger, Agatha pastes Emily, dislodging the woman's glass eye, slightly rousing her. Though through, bleh, through unintentional torture, Agatha jams Emily's glass eye back into her head in hopes of gaining, gaining some insight to the dropper's intentions. Questions were asked, but no real answers were gained. Continuous banter back and forth, Emily tell, finally tells Agatha to seek answers in the geography section. And strangely, Agatha complies without question. Alone with our captives and armed with Agatha's revolver, Alex notices that Emily begins to bite vigorously on her tongue. On the first floor, Cliff contacts Dr. No, Lieutenant Poole's precinct and informs the desk officer of all that has happened in the last 30 minutes. Time marches on, and Emily starts to try and escape her bonds. Alex discovers this and socks her forcefully to the ground. As the trek to the geography section continues, Agatha realizes that she has been mentally manipulated. She makes haste back to the basement with Cliff in tow. In an instant, Emily assaults Ag Alex as Agatha and Cliff re-enter the room. Confused at the situation, Cliff watches as Agatha, furious by the violation, crushes Emily's hand beneath her boot. In a last-ditch attempt, Emily begins to mouth an incantation. Quick thinking and quick reflexes allow Agatha drag allows Agatha to dry gulch the woman with a powerful handbag attack. Emily is rebound and gagged for our own safety. While we wait for the buttons to arrive, Alex pokes around the room and finds a curved ritualistic dagger. Cliff explains the encounter to the beat cops at the scene. Agatha again asks more competent asks a more competent librarian for information on the black wind and the bloody tongue. Back at the hotel, we all got cleaned up and changed into our glad rags. As we leave the hotel, we received a message from Lieutenant Leahy saying that he had some business out of town. At the cemetery, Alex notices that there are some onlookers that are more interested in us than the graves of our love of their loved ones. Attendees at the funeral include a priest, Jonah Kensington, a mouthpiece by the name of Carlton Ramsey, an unknown young woman, and a woman that looks like a news hawk. At the end of the proceedings, Alex interviews the reporter. We learn that she is investigating the cult-related murders in Harlem and believes that Mr. Elias has proof to exonerate Mr. Adams. She is to arrange an introduction with, Ms. with Mrs. Adams. Next, we speak to, with Mr. Ramsey and learn that we are to attend the reading of Elias's will. After the funeral, we return to the juju shop and the pawn shop, which is boarded up tight. 
In the juju shop, we, bre we speak with Silas and Kwame. No amount of coaxing draws out any important information out of the man, but Agatha notices that he's totally screwy. He, however, offers his services in acquiring accoutrement bearing the death cult symbol. It is apparent, it is apparently that though he is not lying, he is holding something back. After a long day of putting the screws on, we make our way back to the hotel room to decompress. Making our way back to the room, we enter and find the body of poor Lieutenant Leahy. Body eviscerated and tongue cut out, it is apparent that someone took their time with him. As we take in the sheer horror of the scene, the heebie-jeebies surge through us and flatties pour into the room. Flatties are cops, apparently. <laughs> Thank you for reading that recap. And yes, we are going to open in the middle of the action. You are beholding the murdered, eviscerated corpse of your former companion and ally, just as you hear cops. And so to set the stage, uh, you are half in, half out of this hotel room. Uh, there is a long corridor, uh, and the cops are coming at you from either end. Uh, they are shouting, you know, freeze, get on the ground. They all have their guns drawn. What would you like to do? Uh, I, I kind of just, I think I'm in shock just seeing this dead body in my room. So I just kind of throw my hands up. All right. And uh, to, to sort of further let you know, uh, your hotel room does have a window and it does have a fire escape. <laughs> because that worked so well the first time. <laughs> that worked out perfectly last time. Mm. It's an no. option. Yeah. I think, yeah, my first reaction, Cliff's first reaction is just to put his hands up and I didn't do it. Okay. How about the rest of you? I imagine Agatha wouldn't be as straightforward as that. Not saying that I didn't do it, but she would. She wouldn't drop her handbag because that would make it dirty. But she will put up her hands and say, "We found him like this." Okay. Uh, <laughs> what about Alex and Dicky? Alex is in a very similar moment of sees all that happen is quite in shock, particularly at like how gutsy the dead body is. And uh, probably looks like a scared kid a bit more than usual. Just kind of like, ah, there's been a murder. All right, Dicky. <sighs> we were just coming back from a funeral. Okay, so everyone surrenders. Excellent. <laughs> mm -hmm. So, uh, you are all put in handcuffs and taken down to, <coughs> excuse me, uh, and taken in a paddy wagon uh, to a precinct office. And those of you who are familiar with Manhattan, you know, uh, after about 10 minutes in the paddy wagon, you are not being taken to the closest precinct house. You are being taken to the Harlan precinct house. And so uh, to you as sort of like a little bit of a reminder, uh, it is, I'm sorry, I totally had this open and then I forgot. Yeah, this is the one where uh, you were talking to Lieutenant Poole, who told you about the uh, Captain Robson. Possibly dirty cop runs the Harlem Precinct House, and this is where you're being taken. Ooh. Yeah, that dirty guy. Okay. Is it just us back here? 
Uh, yes, it is just you for right now. Okay. I have a plan. Okay. I have a plan. You know they're taking us... They're taking us to the Harlem Precinct, right? That's where they're taking us, it seems, yeah. When the door's open, I'm gonna fake a heart attack. They'll have to call an ambulance. We'll still be there. That's true. Oh. I mean, that could work. Are you a good actor, Mr. Schwan? To find out. I mean, you're not going to have, like, an actual one, are you? Like, are you okay? Oh, yeah. I'm in my prime. Oh, okay, yeah. All right, as long as that works out for you. Uh, uh, but what about Miss, Mr. Leahy? Like he, what about his, 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 his friends? Wasn't he supposed to be out of town? Yeah, I think we were set up. Keeper, what would it what would it be to slip these cuffs, if even possible? Uh, well, <clears throat> anything is always possible. Um, won't be most probable. <laughs> so I will give you a raw dex check. Okay. Uh, and you will need um, at least a hard success to get out of the cuffs. How about just breaking them? Just that breaking be strength? them? Yeah, like just yeah. uh, forcing my way out. Okay. Uh, strength, you would need a hard success. All right, let me, let me give it a shot. But raw decks would be just to like get away, but still in cuffs? Yeah, like raw decks would basically be like dislocating your own thumb so you could slip out. Seems legit. I think this is the one. Oh, there we go. That's what I need to do. Oh, I'm going to spend two points of luck. Okay. All right. So, yeah. You're kidding me. <laughs> what? Oh, I was just like, oh, I oh, I thought that I read the right one. Did it nothing show up? No, it just says link for you. Oh, no, that's not even me. All right, let me try and see what I can. Yeah, I think that was me. Okay. Oh, yeah, no, that's Agatha. Never mind. Oh, you click the thingy. Okay. I was just like, I thought I clicked. Okay. And you said it needs. You said it needed to be a hard success. It needs to be a hard success. Yeah. Oh, a hard success would be like the half number that's up there. Mm-hmm. Ooh, okay. All right. So not bad. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <clears throat> so, well, Alex is just like, uh, 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 uh. <laughs> uh, Cliff, you managed to sort of raise the cuffs. Really? Oh, my goodness. Sorry. <laughs> Dickie Shore spends some luck and breaks the cuffs. <laughs> <laughs> With the diabetes, I can't feel my fingertips in me. <laughs> yeah, so you both managed to sort of like brace your handcuffs. And uh, Dickie, if you want to spend the luck, this counts for you too. Yeah. And find like the weak spots and snap open the links. And so you still have the metal bracelets on, but you can move your hands. Yeah. <sighs> Miss, right. Miss Merriweather, you got a hairpin to give them or something? I'm not, I can't get my hands out of this. I'm not breaking any of my digits. But they got their hands now. Like they can, I know. Yeah, I do. Um, yes. So we will assume. Uh-oh. 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 I get the uh, furry weather. No. <laughs> as a flapper. Did I freeze? Yeah. No. Uh, <laughs> no, am I still frozen? No, you're good. Yes. Well, your face froze for a second. Oh, God. Okay. No, no. All right. <clears throat> so as I was saying, uh, Agatha Merriweather, as a flapper, we can assume that her hair is cut into the bob hairstyle, and oh, therefore yes. she has bobby pins, which... Uh, uh, so for Clifford Dickey, because you have full use of your hands, uh, you will just need to make a normal locksmithing attempt 
to unlock anyone's sandcuffs. Uh, anyone in cuffs can make another their own locksmith attempt, but it will be hard because you're trying to do it mm -hmm. like this, which is awkward and weird. Okay, so the I hands are the bound before. behind us. Uh, so, Cliff they were. and uh, Dickie, did you spend the two luck points? Oh, yeah, yeah so, I, I definitely did. Yeah, so you both, like, you've snapped your cuffs, and you're both okay. Okay. Uh, so. Were the hands bound in front or behind? Behind. Okay. All right. Uh, yeah, I mean, I'll give it a shot. Are we, I'm like, actually... in the paddy wagon now? Yes, you are. I mean, in all honesty, I'm better at just trying to break the cuffs of other people. Because my locksmith is only a 20. If I could get out of here, my locksmith thing's a 50. All right, let me... Uh, I'll try to break um, Alex's cuffs. Oh, God, let's hope that nothing bad happens. Uh, nope. Because it's, <laughs> it's a hard... It's a regular success, but yeah, it's not a hard success, so... All right. <sighs> But uh, yeah, so Alex can try and use. Jeez! <laughs> <laughs> that was a fun surprise. <laughs> but Alex, you can use the bobby pins from Agatha. On a hard success, you will have picked the lock on your handcuffs. Okay. Oh, I was not ready for a jump scare. Oh, oh, was oh, was that the jump scare one? My bad. Yeah. Remember, I can't hear these, so I'm like, I think that's the right one. It just went, we'll, just go, we'll just go with some high tension for right now. <laughs> oh, yeah, no. I'm, yeah, not good from behind, guys. <laughs> okay, what would the other two of you like to do? Somebody get me out of these cuffs. I mean, I'll try to help Agatha. It, okay. Well, they... Whilst um, Alex is trying to, I, Alex is picking her cuffs, right? Attempting, and I failed, uh, but I'm going to keep fidgeting with it, I guess. I mean, you could spend luck. I would have to spend 18 luck just to get a regular success. You, you, could, would you still could, you have, could push. Yeah, you that's true. You push can the push. You could push a roll. Uh, all oh, right. boy. Agatha, here, let I'll me help you. Try. All right, so I made an extreme success for Agatha's cuffs. Okay. So, yeah, just point, and Agatha is free. Oh, thank God. What would be one of the... And I just know it because I used to do this as a kid. My upbringing was weird. But um, what sort of a role would it be to try and get so that I kind of, like, shimmy my wrists with the handcuffs down underneath me to try and get them in front of me. Ooh. She dex. is, but we. That'd dex. be a normal dex check, yes. Okay. Yeah, I shimmied. Okay. So now so, they're yeah. in front of me. Can I... Mm -hmm. uh, is Would the next attempt on lock picking be the push, or would that be a second just generalized attempt at lock picking? Uh, I'm going to say that this is going to be a push because uh, I don't like, like, just roll till you get it. Yeah, so yeah, that's This good. would have to be a push. But that uh, shimmy around could justify how you're able to push the roll. Okay. All right. I think will this okay. character just die already? Because her rolls indicate that she should be super dead by now. <laughs> <laughs> All, right. All right. So, so that failed really bad. Uh, <laughs> that was a 98. <laughs> so uh, take a point of damage as you oh. badly sprain your wrists. Great. Oh, great. Okay, weird question. Is this door locked? On um, the paddy wagon? Yeah. Yes, it is. It is locked from the outside. Okay. Second question. Mm -hmm. Did they confiscate our weapons? Did they pat us down and take any weapons from us? Uh, they would have taken the obvious weapons. So any like uh, guns in your handbags or on a hip holster. Mm -hmm. 
<laughs> those are gone. But if you had like a knife in your boot, do you still have that? I do. Dang, I don't have anything. Well, I have that, and would they have taken my ceremonial dagger if I'd like shoved it like, <clears throat> down into like my vest that I got? Give me a luck roll. A luck roll. I didn't take my guns to the funeral, so they're probably still at the hotel. Ooh. But I'm trying to decide if I had my knife on me. Yes, you probably. still have the fancy knife. I have fancy knife. Can I try to get us out of this paddy wagon? I'm gonna. Actually, would it be better, Alex? Can you open the lock? Can you jimmy the lock on this door? I can try. I say with my badly busted wrist and and my hands still cut. Sure, boss. Well, if I could try to break it open, that's just gonna make a lot of noise. That's fair. Uh, so, from the inside, is there any sort of like mechanism? to be seen uh, I'm going to say no the, these are pretty well designed right. <laughs> you know they don't want criminals to be able but to there would be enough of a gap that a blade might be able to fit through sure yeah okay. I'll give you that because uh, you have the ceremonial dagger uh, go All ahead right. and give me another look so I have that check. and I have another blade as well but yeah if this doesn't work we could always now we could fake the heart attack for Mr. Schwartz. Yes! Have a regular. Okay. Nice. And so, uh, yeah, the paddy wagon doors swing open. Oh. You're driving actively? Yes. All right. I'll, with, like, what speed? Yeah, like, I want to hold it closed until we get to a <laughs> stoplight. Okay, yeah. I'd like to say this is the second time in a few days that we are running from the cops. (laughs) Just putting that out there. I know, but when we get somewhere, we can call the not Harlem. You know, we can call Lieutenant Poole. All right. Explain what's going on. So, yeah, the paddy wagon comes to a stop. All right. Now, let's go. And I kind of yeah, I open the door. Yoink. All right. So I guess it you, takes their shoes off. You are essentially like almost at the edge of Harlem. And so Rip, what you see, you're just standing on a street corner, minding your own business. You see a paddy wagon stop. The back busts open and like these four weirdos come tumbling out. Very well dressed weirdos. Yeah, we technically, were, technically, we're still in the uh, stuff that we wore room. to the funeral. <laughs> well, that's uh, strange for the cops to lose something like that. They ru- are you guys running? Oh yeah, yeah. Everyone I'm, except for oh, Dicky, yeah. who's kind oh, of God. walking briskly. Yeah. I've got so, like a shiny weird dagger in my handcuffed hands. I really so, want to help Mr. Schwarm along, but I know he won't let me. Give him a piggyback ride. <laughs> and so, Rip, you happen to know of a nearby speakeasy. You guys looking for a place to hide? Yeah, that'd be real ducky right about now. Yeah, yeah I just kind of whip my head around. Yeah. Get anywhere off the streets, good. Got some butter and egg to spend. Uh, how much you need? Come on this way. All right. So what happens now is the paddy wagon continues forward, and it's going around the corner. So the open doors like start like banging, oh. alerting the cops that there has been an escape. <laughs> we gotta go, we gotta go, we gotta go, we gotta go. <laughs> As she's like trying to shove, like with her handcuffed hands, like shove the knife like back into her vest awkwardly. <laughs> Rip is just going to calmly walk around the corner and just come on. 
Yeah, thank go, go, go. Yeah, thank All you, right. mister. Grab Mr. Swarm by the arm. Drag him. <laughs> Get your okay. hands off me. So, uh, you manage, thanks to your new buddy, Rip, uh, you end up in a very dimly lit, smoke-filled, windowless speakeasy. I turn to this, you know, new buddy, thanks, and extend my hand. The name's Cliff. I shake his hand. Rip, two P's. Two F's. So, uh... How'd you guys get in those digs? Staring at their cups. Uh, Alex is like awkwardly trying to fold her arms to like hide the handcuffs. Uh, well, we, we were had a set few. up. Okay. Well, Need- I mean, you look a little. It. You look a little too well dressed to be, uh, you know, everyday murderers. So I figured I'd take my shot with you. You come across a lot of everyday murderers around here? Eh, not every day. But, uh, you guys want a drink? Oh, yeah. Yeah. After uh, like you, uh, you, uh, need a hand, and I look at the, uh, little girl in cups. Yeah, maybe a little bit. That would be very... I would be much obliged to you, sir. Uh, I will give my hand at trying to pick to the cuffs. Let's see. All right. Uh, give me a uh, locksmith check, please. Didn't show up on the roll, but it was a 14, which is a success. Okay. Yeah, so you managed to produce a lockpick key from somewhere on your person and just, uh, click, click. Mm. Ah! You can also, uh, remove the broken handcuffs from everyone else. Wow, how do I get my hands on one of those? What, lockpicks? No, like, it was, like, the, like, a set like that, because that was a lot easier than what I've been using. It, it helps when you're not in cuffs. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We can we can work on that, Alex. Once yeah. we get once we get uh, back to the hotel, maybe. I'll give you a couple tricks to do it when you're in cuffs too later. Okay. We're not going back to the hotel. <sighs> They'll be looking okay. for us there. Yeah, it occurs to you that now that you've done a runner, uh, yeah. warrants being issued are pretty imminent. This place have a phone, Rip? Yeah, oh, yeah right over there. There. I head to the phone. I go to the phone and try to call Lieutenant Poole. Uh, yeah, you get a hold of him. Uh, Lieutenant Poole, this is Cliff Reynolds. Oh, God, how can I help you? Uh, you're probably going to maybe see a warrant coming out from the Harlem station for the arrest of me, uh, myself, and companions. Oh, and is that so? What have you done? Uh, Well, we didn't do anything, but we were set up. Uh, Uh, Set up a... What have they set you up to do? uh, Detective Leahy's been murdered. Oh. Are you serious? Yeah. We're pretty sure it was him. Oh, that poor boy. Where is he? Uh, well, that's the thing. He was in my hotel room. I see. But oh, yeah. you know, we were at the funeral, and I even <laughs> called your precinct earlier today. So it couldn't have been us. Oh, well. <clears throat> oh, that's a, that's a tragedy. I should probably get off the phone with you now. <clears throat> okay. I'll, uh, I'll, I'll see what I can do, though. 
Thanks. Click. I don't know. He didn't take that as hard as I thought he would as I hang up the phone. I mean, <clears throat> he did sound very cut up. Uh, please excuse uh, oh. my terrible uh, recovering from cold voice. Oh, no worries. Okay. Scratch that last part. So what did, what did he say? Well, he's he's going to look into, he's going to see what he can do for us. So I think we should just probably lay low for a bit. And uh, today is what? Today's uh, Saturday? Today is Saturday, yeah. So we're going to have to find a place to, to lay low and uh, maybe get to that, you know, see what happens. Call, call him on Monday, I'm assuming. Uh, Mr. Double P, uh, do you know of a place that we could lay low for a couple days? I might have a little something. Do I have a little something? Yeah, you uh, <clears throat> you know where there are various uh, safe houses and uh, bolt holes. Yeah, I have a little bolt hole we can go to. Right. But uh, now I got to ask, since uh, I did help you all out. What the hell happened? Uh, what got what got you here? Well, did, did you did you happen to catch any of my phone call? Uh, no, I was too busy paying attention to the drinks. OK, uh, it's probably best we don't talk about this here. Uh, why don't we head to that bowl hole and we can give you the, the skinny. All right. I suppose. Sure. Uh, <clears throat> you end up in a very dingy uh, apartment. It's a one bedroom efficiency in Hell's Kitchen. <sighs> Slept in worse. Hey, at <coughs> least it's warm. Yeah. Oh. Alex, you know any any of the, the papes around here? Uh, I'm not as familiar with this area. I kind of just uh, normally stick around Manhattan. You know, that's where the the real you know uh, money types are. Okay. Uh, Hell's Kitchen is one of the neighborhoods in Manhattan, like the the lower part, like heading that way. I went like. I see it in my head. I just don't remember the <clears throat> name of it. I'm not looking at the map. Uh, but yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm sure I could uh, make a few friends if needed. Well, just maybe they could uh, keep an eye out for us. Yeah, mm-hmm. I can do that. And uh, she would like just probably massage at her strained wrists a bit and shove them in her pockets and uh, I guess linger out kind of keep a little eye out i guess uh do we have anyone uh got a different hat or anything like uh you know would there be any other hats or any sort of anything lying around there so i'm not just wearing the same old thing that i was standing out oh, there sure. like nice i'm clothes. sure you'd have a couple of hats that would be way too big for you uh, sounds fine hats shirts something just so that i'm not standing out here in my sunday best you know that would be a little uh odd uh, nope. You are looking a little fancy for uh, this part of town. Yeah. They'll be sorely disappointed if they try to come after these pockets, I'll tell you what. So I guess just kind so, of rummaging around in sort of like any drawers uh, mm-hmm. drawers and uh, things in the efficiency mm-hmm. apartment. Yeah, it is all way too big for you, but you can find uh, a new hat and jacket. Yeah, so hat, jacket, just kind of like untuck the shirt, like kind of. All right, uh, thanks. I'll uh, I'll be outside. Okay. So so again, uh, what what the hell happened now that we're uh, in a little more private a place? Yeah. So we've been looking into some disappearances, some murders. 
that happened here in Harlem or happened in Harlem. Uh, it's tied to some other things, but long story short, a detective uh, acquaintance of ours was murdered, but the, they did it in our at our hotel in my room uh, and Dang. framed us. Whoever it is that's doing these murders, but then you know they didn't take us to the closest precinct. They were driving us to Harlem, which is a little bit weird considering there was a much now, closer if I, precinct. If, if I'm taken to Harlem, that's usually a good thing because I can weasel my way out of it. But uh, why is it bad for you? Because whatever's going on has apparently has some ties to the heart to what's to the Harlem police. We've gotten a tip that they're uh, on the take, maybe in someone's pocket. So business as usual. Okay. And does that ha- what happens in that precinct? Well, I mean, I, I don't know about you guys, but I like to do a little running. Uh, I, I may help out the speakeasies a little bit. And uh, nah. when I need to, I grease a couple hands. Okay. So I, yeah, I think this is much worse than that. Joyous day. Joyous day. So now that I'm involved in this, apparently, uh, what's your guys' plan? Uh, You're looking at it. Yeah. I mean, oh, what, the hell? what did I just get myself into? Uh, you do have a appointment on Monday yeah. to go to uh, Carlton uh, Carlton Lawyer <laughs> yeah Mr. Sh- <laughs> Mr. Schwarm how, ba- how bad does it look for us yeah even- uh, <laughs> Carlton Ramsey's office for the reading of Elias's will this is uh, looking pretty bad uh, not gonna lie we've been framed for murder and then we ran away when they tried to bring us to the station that's not that's some pretty bad charges right there uh what if what if we can prove the murder's a frame job how about then we need to get some real hard evidence for that well i mean we have we have witnesses we were at the funeral and this morning we were we we have a call to the police station. Yeah, but we, need all, to, we need to find out how long he's been dead. All they have to do is say, "Oh, they killed him before the funeral," and we're locked up. There's no real proof against <laughs> if we did murder them before the funeral. Yeah. Uh, what about this... a maid? She would have came into the room, right? <clears throat> Do you think any jury's going to believe that? And Richard's hands begin to shake a little as he starts pacing a bit. He's just like, I need a... I I don't know. You're the lawyer. Yeah, just to uh, point out, it is 1925, so uh, it is very difficult to pinpoint exact cause of death. Like, we're talking on the order of, like, uh, he's been dead for a couple days. Uh, up here, I'm hearing Dickie ask for a drink. Rip's gonna go over to a cane in the corner, grab the cane, pop the cane top off, and hand it to him. Have a drink. I need me one of these. Uh. Thank you. It's a neat place to keep a drink. Well, cops don't typically look there. Huh? Smart, very smart. It All also right. helps when you're trying to get a couple gallons of this elsewhere. This thing we gotta do is find a place to really lay low. If this will cut it, this will cut it. After that, we might want to get some get some guns and uh, just wait until Monday. <laughs> 
Yeah. So where are we going to get guns at? I look to our boot to the bootlegger. <laughs> you know what you want? I, I've just got mine, and I pull out my guns. Two of them. Like this is this, is, and you're not taking this one. Where did you get the guns? This is an heirloom. Oh, uh, right. What about this the other one? On the other hand, this one I got from uh, service. Hmm. All right. So, I mean, if one of you needs it, just don't hit me in the back with it. Who's the best shot? I, I look right at Dickie and just immediately change to the next person over. <laughs> Uh, Agatha looks at Cliff. Yeah, I was like, that's probably me. That was a pretty good shot in my day. Yeah, but that was with a musket. What? Uh, the Civil War was a long time ago, chum. <laughs> it was a war still. Well, if we're going to stay here, I'm going to need to get out of these clothes as Agatha is still standing in her what, funeral dress. Yeah, yeah, sure. Check it out. I don't exactly have too much for the ladies, though. Is there a, is there a, a store that might be open around here? Uh, not this late on Saturday night. All right. And we know they're not going to be open tomorrow. Uh, what kind of neighborhood are we in? It's not great. Hell's Kitchen. Well, if we are in Hell's Kitchen, then there are clothes being hung out to dry. <laughs> yes. It's not a great idea, but we're already wanted for murder. So. Right. <laughs> well, uh, why don't you let the kid do it? I mean, she's tiny. Good for stealing stuff. <clears throat> Uh, give me a stealth roll. Whoever wants to steal laundry without being spotted. I just feel like I'm not going to find anything in my size. So I feel like if this was the direction I was going, that's probably already been on Alex's to do list outside. Because, <laughs> like, it's just we're inside of some apartment, right? Just like a general yeah. apartment building. Yeah. You know, just kind of poking my head around different places. So if other people are trying to steal things off of lines too, I'm in. Yeah, whoever wants to steal laundry, give me a stealth check. Ooh. Oh, Lord. Okay, here it comes. Nominate in the kid. <laughs> I'm oh. nervous. Like my hand's hovering over top of my mouse. And <laughs> my rolls have not been it. Yeah, when I watched the past couple of games, all I could think was... Oh, every time you roll. Why? My rolls are terrible. <laughs> oh, wow. Uh, oh, I, okay. did, yeah. I, I did. I did really well. Yeah. <laughs> <Nice>. <laughs> Extremely well. <laughs> I'm going to not click yet. <laughs> See yeah, you just, just uh, the whole line. <laughs> you just open the window and there oh, look, is. Close. Yeah. Um, can I go out? I'm not going to try to steal anything, but if I see anyone hanging stuff that looks about my size, I will offer to buy their clothes from them. Well, what's your build? I'm like 6'4", 250. You, you could get like tiny clothes to wear off of me. That's why I was like, I'm going to see if there's like the chances are probably slim, but I'm going to look outside. Uh, yeah, Agatha, you managed to lift an entire outfit that fits you perfectly. <clears throat> nice. Uh, and then, Cliff, go ahead, give me a luck roll. Uh, darn you. My luck of 20. No. No. <laughs> no. Yeah, no. you just, uh, you find someone uh, who looks about your size but like they don't speak English and you oh. try and like arrange this transaction end up spooking them and they just fuck off 
Uh, would I be able to help out uh, Alex with looking for clothes that are small? Like, yeah, about uh, four doors down, there's a family that has like six kids. Uh, yeah, you know what? I will I will carry forward Agatha's luck roll because like you rolled a one and <laughs> I rolled a one, rolled a one. <laughs> a reward. The uh, whole family was out there and it was like she just like pulled the whole line in like a fishing rod. <laughs> yeah, so you get suitable nice. <coughs> excuse me, suitable clothes for Alex as well. Nice. Thanks, Mom. You're welcome. All right. <clears throat> it's New York. It's Saturday night. What are you up to? Hiding uh, in this shithole, I guess. Yeah, right. <laughs> I, I was gonna I say I just, I just picked up a whole bunch of schmucks off the street. I don't know. I mean, there's a bunch of canes full of booze here, apparently. So <laughs> not all of them, just a couple of them. Oh. Is there a place to get some food? <clears throat> Please make uh, yeah. me a speakeasy. <clears throat> well, like, yeah. Anyone's going to rat us out there. Yeah, so I guess go get something to eat. Okay. Should try and figure out our next move. Yeah. All right. What What is your next move? I mean, I think we should probably, I mean, Probably just lay low for the night, see what tomorrow brings. Could check in with the detective, but I don't know if he's going to be in or not because it is Sunday. I don't think he's going to help us even if he was there. Yeah. Uh, we can we can try. That's all we got right now with that. Um, and then just lay low till Monday. Yeah, we got two places to be on Monday. Yeah. Yep. I mean, well, hold on. Wait, couldn't we just call the chick? The reported chick? Wasn't this exactly what she was worried about? Like people setting up people in Harlem? That's true. Yeah. She was the one who was telling us that like that's what she thinks happened to that guy, the one who's in jail now. You got her number? Uh I'm sure there's numbers involved, so I know where she works. Okay, so let me get this straight. You guys were told this was something that was going on, and you did it anyway? We didn't kill anybody. You didn't do nothing. Yeah, but you were told people were getting framed for stuff, and yet you still walked right in and do it. Uh, no, we were just Man, trying to go home and go to bed, and someone was murdered in our place. Man, you all got some some good mocks. Could have just gone out the fire escape. We could have done that. That's true. Uh, Mr. Schwarm would have got left behind. Uh, we would have been breaking Mr. Schwarm out of the paddy wagon. Yeah. But I broke myself out of the paddy wagon. I got myself out of them cups. That is uh. true. So, uh, I do think again. I want to. I do think I want to. I think heading to the hotel tomorrow might not be a bad idea. To, well, what if just to, what just if to keep an eye us, on it? What if instead of us, we get the the reporter lady to do it because she can do it all official like? Yeah, but that's about gonna, we go over there, go there right now, middle of the night. Yeah, I mean, you know, I'm morning. sure. Like her name, her name was. Her name was. Wanna say it was Rebecca says me says Mayor. <laughs> Actually, Mr. Shorm, that's not a bad idea. Might be better to do it now. Uh, it was Rebecca Schosenberg. Thank you. I knew the last one was very Shasha Sha. So um yeah. Um yeah, Re Rebecca Schosenberg. I'm sure if we just call right up to the times, they'll be able to connect us right to her or point us in her direction. I mean, give that a shot. And that way, then it's not us walking into the place where they just caught us saying we murdered someone we didn't murder. Yeah, I, th um, I think I, don't know, I think Mr. Shorm's hurt, though. I think we should try to get back there tonight. 
Well, I mean, okay. if that's the case, why don't you guys just stay here and tell me what you need? I mean, I don't know about you guys, but uh, the cops seem to like me half the time when they meet me. You're going to have to and, teach uh, us this. I, uh, d- you hand him a, case, a cane full of booze. But that move. But, uh, I mean, it's not like I was there. So I could just walk on in, walk on out, and I'd be the wiser. Where is this place? I don't think they're just going to let you walk in. It's kind of a crime scene. This is true. It was in your own rooms? Yeah. Yeah. Well, in you my room. You had one room? Oh, no, okay. it was in my room. But I need stuff from my room. So I might be able to sneak past them, but uh, I could probably definitely get the rest of you some stuff. I mean, I still, I, I'm still going to go. Whether or not I go in, it's a different story. I'm going to scope it out, see what's going on. All right, so Cliff and Rip are making their way back to the hotel. Uh, well, the other three, I assume you're going to lie low. Mm-hmm. Yes. I suppose if one of the people who knows how to use a phone uh, could try to use that magical phone device to uh, contact the Times. Where are we even going to get a phone in this neighborhood? <laughs> mm. In the speakers, he had one. Go down to the speakeasy. We could go down there and eat there if they have it. Remember eating? Oh, crazy Uh, times. Crazy times. All right. I will say that there is a payphone in the lobby of this uh, kind of shitty apartment building where you're at. Okay. Uh, But uh, you put in a call to the New York Times. Uh, and pretty much they say uh, Rebecca Schosenberg is off and they do not expect her back until Monday. Damn it. All right, then. All right. Uh, yeah. So for Rip and Cliff, uh, please, uh, Cliff, I would like a stealth from you uh, and a spot hidden from you both. Okay. I mean, right now I'm just kind of scoping out outside. Like I'm staying like on the other side of the street of the hotel. Okay. Uh, I haven't gone in yet, in, please. Okay. Because that's kind of what I want to see if <clears throat> there's any. Uh... Oh God, no. <laughs> All right. It won't actually register any of my roles when I'm doing this, um, and that's a 55, so it's a You no. should be able to, um, like, double-click on the number box. Yeah. There you go. Okay. Yeah. There we go. <clears throat> that's why I keep on clicking dragon. Yeah, there you go. Uh, but yeah, you got a regular success, so uh, tick the little ticky box next to spot hidden, uh, and you'll be able to increase that when we... Uh, <laughs> Managed to get you all out of New York. Uh, but yeah, with the result of your spot hitting, you're like, cop there, cop there, cop there. <clears throat> and uh, so, probably uh, prevent Cliff from walking into the eye line of one of them. So stay out of that way, that way, that. You know what? You. Maybe you should just stay here for a minute. Yeah. Is there anybody near the fire escape? Uh, yes. Okay. Well, uh, I will uh, see if I can take a minute and distract that guy near the the one near the fire escape long enough for him to uh, hopefully quietly go up, and I'll just walk up to that one in particular, get him to face the other direction and be like, hey, officer, uh, what what the heck's going on around here? I mean, there's, you know, it's almost like the whole precinct's over here. 
Uh, yeah, and so uh, what happens is you get a very uh, involved and emotional diatribe from this cop because, like, one of their own has just been murdered, and like he starts going into detail describing all the terrible things they will do to the cop killer once they catch him. Uh, <coughs> while this is going on, <coughs> excuse me, Cliff, uh, give me a stealth roll to climb up the fire escape. Okay. It's gonna be it's gonna be bad. Yep, it's gonna be bad. I fail horribly. Okay. Which so, is what I expected. Uh yeah, so you try to ascend the fire escape and then it's like clang, clang, clang. Uh you now have the attention of the cop who's like, Oi, what are you trying to do there? Uh just sitting here grabbing a smoke as I take out a pack of cigarettes. Pop one in my mouth. <clears throat> no, go no. smoke somewhere else. Uh, cigarette officer? Look suspiciously at you, but we'll take a cigarette. All right. I strike a match, light it for him. Light mine. So what's right. going on? What's going on? And what so am the I, cop, liver? The cop again says... Uh, I, know, hold a pa- I, I hold the pack. I'll take them too. Uh, yeah. So apparently, um, there is a cop killer on the loose, and there's this <clears throat> gang, a weird gang. Uh, yeah. This, yeah. Who uh, killed poor Detective Leahy? Oh my goodness, that's horrible. Like what? Wasn't, uh, he repo- wasn't he coming up to retirement soon? Oh no, he was a he was a young guy. Must be a different one. What a precinct are you with, officer? Uh, he says that he's on loan from Harlem. Okay. You know a uh, lieutenant Poole? Yeah. He, uh, you know, bless his heart. All right, well. You, you get the feeling he does not think well of Lieutenant Spool's capabilities. <clears throat> and to, to clarify, Pool is your contact? Right. Yeah, okay. Yeah. <clears throat> you get that well. there's a little bit of a <clears throat> precinct rivalry going on. Lieutenant Poole, wasn't he the one that was working with <clears throat> Leahy? Oh, yeah. He's he's distraught. He was here a couple hours ago to uh, identify the body. and uh, <clears throat> It's too bad. I, I feel like he uh, <clears throat> taken Leahy under his wing. <clears throat> Poor man would have uh, done better with a different mentor, I think. Oh, why's that? And so it's now this like very awkward uh, mm-hmm. moment in which uh, you know he doesn't want to shit talk another cop to a civilian, but also he he clearly thinks that Lee he is not a good police officer or not Lee Pool. Like, uh, yeah, not to pry, but are all you guys on loan from Harlem? Well, you know, some of us are from Queens. Okay. All right. Well, I finished my cigarette. You have a good day. You too. Then I go look uh, for a rear entrance, like a staff entrance to the hotel. Sure. Maybe outside, like away from this guy that might not be covered. Yeah, you can find a staff entrance. I'll spend a couple more minutes BSing with him just to be like, you know, get him him to, again, stop paying attention to our, my uh, compatriot who is clearly not doing something illegal. Totally. (laughs) <laughs> so yeah, if I can find a rear entrance I will try to go in that way okay yeah uh, you managed to get in through the service entrance which is where they take in um, all the fresh laundry groceries etc <clears throat> okay 
Uh, I will try to make my way up to my room or our rooms. Yeah, like essentially they're watching your room so heavily mm -hmm. that there's pretty much no way to get in. Um, but <clears throat> Rip, you can get a little bit closer and not be recognized. Um, pretty much everything that you had in your hotel room, so all of your possessions, everything, uh, has been packed up and taken as evidence to the Harlem precinct. So now we have to break into a police station. Damn it. Damn it. Alrighty. Well, that's not good. Well, certainly life has been interesting since I met you people. Yeah, it's probably only going to get more interesting. So I guess it's time to go back to your place for now. All right, so it is fairly late at night by the time you return. <clears throat> so any luck with uh, that reporter? Yeah, it seems that she's out of the office. Not going to be back in until Monday. <laughs> and that's when we're supposed to meet up with her. Did you, maybe we can go. Maybe we can go catch her tomorrow at her place. Do you know where she lives? Well, did you check the phone book? There's a book full of phones? Do they have phone books? Maybe. I don't know. Did... Is it? Wait, I I heard someone usually when like I'm trying call to call the operator. The papers, that's what I was going to say. I didn't know what the word for the porter. That's what people are yelling at when I on that the the little phone. That's over there when I'm trying to sell the papers. The porter. They're like, porter, give me this person. Uh, yeah, well, I guess we could try. Yeah. Yeah, I just very quickly Googled uh, phone books. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so, uh, yeah, you can... Uh, yeah, it will take a while to find uh, the proper phone book, um, but you will eventually be able to track down uh, Rebecca Schosenberg's uh, number. Uh, and there's going to be a lot of like uh, R. Schosenberg and just a couple people that you're gonna have to call looking for, which I'm not gonna make you role play, but yes, you do get a hold of Rebecca. Like, hi, I'm a suspected murder. I'm, I'm, a, oh, well, I, I, <laughs> I'm a murder I could, suspect. I could, I'm trying to find to, somebody. Are you this person? I could person? try to talk to her because we I'm had calling about time. your car's extended warranty. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the very first documented. You're here too. <laughs> I'm calling about uh, four possible convicted killers here. Yeah, so. Not convicted. Uh, <clears throat> Sorry, not convicted. Four possible killers on the run here. Okay. Well, she, oh, she will to, understand. <laughs> to set the scene here, you are at the bottom floor of this shitty tenement uh, on a payphone. <coughs> you've got the phone book in front of you, uh, and you've just dialed the right number. Uh, and uh, you hear on the other end of the line, uh, Schilsenberg House. Uh, hi, uh... My name's Alex. I was I was looking for Rebecca. This is Rebecca. Hey, Rebecca. It's it's uh, Alex. We met a uh, we met at Mr. Elias's funeral earlier today. Oh. Oh, how, uh, yes. Um, how can I help you? Um, yeah. So, uh, crazy story. But you know those things where you were talking about how uh, you believe <coughs> that the cops in Harlem are corrupt. All right. <clears throat> um. I think we're definitely on to something. Me and some of my friends just got framed. Framed for? Uh, we can talk about the details on that part later. But um, let's just say that uh, it's very similar to some of the things that uh, someone you were researching possibly also got framed for. 
as I'm looking around, trying not to say the word murder in a, in a, in a lobby. <laughs> Uh, all right. Well, I can meet you. Uh, and so she gives the name of a diner. Yeah. Um, I'm just. Uh, and then this is me. I'm just curious. As far as uh, um, you know, this is kind of a delicate situation, and I wouldn't want to have anything really get in the way of your uh, your research that you've been doing. You've been working so hard for. Um, we are. My my friends and I. Uh, had this situation of being in the wrong place at the wrong time as far as uh, this uh, here uh, incident goes. So how low-key is this diner that you're talking about? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> All right. Uh, if you need to stay, uh, I will rent a hotel room. Okay. Um, like we can, uh, like I said, if, it, if we're able to just, uh, I don't know. And how far, how far away from, uh, I don't know, like Harlem is this place that you're suggesting? Well, it's in lower Manhattan. Oh, perfect. That's about as far away from Harlem as we can get. That sounds lovely. Um, so, uh, yeah, I, I know I'll definitely be there. I'll, I'm going to see if any of my companions, uh, would come with you because I just feel like you will definitely want to hear what we've uh, witnessed this evening. All right, uh, ten o'clock tomorrow morning. Ah, uh, yeah, that sounds uh, that sounds really good. Okay, and so she gives you the address of uh, what is essentially a flop house. Mm -hmm. uh, it is pretty much just a bunk house where uh, sailors stay in between voyages, like. Zero mm -hmm. amenities. It is literally a flea bag. Perfect. <laughs> mm. okay. Better than being out in front watching a cop eat a donut. Do they have to? Yeah, they would have donuts. Yeah, watching than watching a mm -hmm. cop eat a donut at this point. Mm, uh, donuts. All right. So. The largest of Marge donuts. All right. So, uh, with that, we have, uh, unless there's any last minute things anyone likes to do, uh, we are finally calling an end to Saturday the 17th of January. Uh, that was, so that was gonna... a long day. That was a long day. <laughs> it was day. a very long day. <laughs> you accomplished a lot. Uh, we survived so this. We're going to go ahead and take our 10 minute break right now. Uh, oh. So I can get some cough drops that I very desperately need. Uh, yeah, and we will see everybody in 10 minutes and find out what hijinks are you going to get up to on the 18th. <clears throat> <clears throat> okay. Are we on break? I don't know. No, we are not. Oh, yeah. Uh <laughs> Haha, uh, we fooled you. We're sticking uh, around. I'm just gonna stare off. I'm gonna stare at you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he disappeared. What happened? <laughs>
two, one, and we have returned. Hello, everybody. So, uh, as I have just output to the chat in Fantasy Grounds, it is 10 in the morning, uh, Sunday, the 18th of January. <clears throat> you have six days until the 24th of January, which will be a new moon, which something is going to happen at Juju House of that date. But for now, you are at a flop house flea bag waiting to meet to uh, to meet Rebecca Schosenberg to tell her all about your travails. So is there oh. anything that anyone wanted to get done early in the morning before meeting? Uh, I only wanted to inform the group probably last night about the status of where our stuff is. So that, I got uh, nothing. You are muted, Dwayne. Yeah, I <coughs> realized it as I started talking. Okay. Uh, I was going to say, uh, Cliff, that means that the cops have taken all of our stuff and it's now where? Uh, in the in the police station in Harlem, somewhere. Uh, probably uh, the fairest assumption would be the evidence locker. Hmm. Although, you know, if you had something real nice, it's probably in an officer's pocket now. Son of a bitch. Oh, well. Okay. I don't have any, I don't have anything to do prior to 10 a.m. All right. <clears throat> In that case, we will just fast forward to the flop house. Um, again, it is very dirty, very crowded, very grimy. Uh, the good thing, though, is that uh, the sailors, the off-duty sailors, want all the sleep they can get. And so most of them are passed out, sleeping off a hangover. And so you manage to get a room all to yourself. And Rebecca has shown up. She's, you know, dressing down. Uh, certainly not in clothes as nice as when you saw her yesterday. Uh, but she does have her notebook out and she's ready to take notes. She's like, all right, tell me everything. Okay. Uh, looks over to Mr. Reynolds. Where should we start with this one? It's been a lot in the past handful of days. Oh, um, one more detail. As you were making your way through the streets of New York on your way here, uh, the murder of Detective Leahy is the big headline news going on right now. <clears throat> so you got uh, the newsies shouting, uh, cop murdered in a uptown hotel. Murderers at large. Fortunately, this Buy a is... Paper. I was going to say, yeah. I'm going to buy a paper just so that I can see if there's pictures of these uh, unscrupulous folk. So there are no pictures. Uh, unfortunately, <laughs> this is before like police sketches are a thing. Uh, they do publish descriptions of you. <clears throat> Not of Rip, obviously, but of the rest of you. Um, so, yeah. There's that uh, reward given for anybody who feels like turning you into the cops. Mm. What's the reward? Yeah. Um, I say it's five hundred dollars in. Oh, okay. That's a lot money. of money. Yep. Man, you cop killers are worth something. Don't get any get any ideas, Mister Double P. We didn't kill anybody. I can pay more. <clears throat> Good All right. to know we got a rich friend here. But regardless, uh, let's. Uh, well, we would go in and meet with um, Miss Reynolds. Rebecca. Yeah. Yeah. And just uh, hey, so uh, here's our. I'm sure I, I'm sure you know the news, probably before some of us, as it got out. Uh, so, uh, needless to say, we were not involved. I assure you, you were there with us when we were at the funeral. I was. We, we were going home to change out of our clothes. And then we found him there. 
And then we got Chase. Sort of. Well, now they're chasing us. But we had heard from what you had said about what was going down in Harlem that uh, it's just, it all connects together. The symbols, the connections with the expeditions. As we were in, we were <laughs> potentially going to work with Mr. Elias on a a some type of venture as 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 a as Alex is saying all these things she's continually like looking to the others for like the little like you're doing great sweetie moments it, oh yeah if Alex looks my way I just nod like okay oh, yeah, right, right, cool cool I'm not trying to like tweet like a bird here but I'm just I mean this uh, Miss Rebecca here understands. I mean, this is what you were. Did you see? You said that you had seen patterns like this through the Harlem, uh, the Harlem cops, right? Right. No, I believe you. I believe you didn't kill anybody, yeah. but you have made uh, some rather dire enemies. <clears throat> I don't know why Lieutenant Robson is coming after you so hard, but uh, he he definitely seems to. Uh, want to put you all in prison <coughs> uh, alongside Mr. Hilton yes alongside Mr. Hilton Adams sorry I was looking up the name and a lot of it just seems it seems that there's the connection with those types of murders and and the the names of various people we've been coming across and in our own limited investigation at this point, it just, there's definitely something afoot in Harlem and it has to somehow connect with the expeditions with the, the, with Mr. Elias, with the, what was the, uh, the imports place, right? Miss Merriweather, there was some import person Oh, in Kwame? In Kwame, yeah. He had eyes. Strange eyes. He wasn't all there. Yeah, he had more than just strange eyes. He was just gone. Like, he was there, but he was gone. <clears throat> yeah. We've had a trying few days, Miss Rebecca. All right. Well, um, <clears throat> I'm not, to be perfectly honest, I'm not sure exactly what I can do. I can't publish, I can't publish saying you're innocent without uh, proof of this. Uh, under understood. If, uh, I just figured if, as you came across anything else, you know, uh, well, not entirely certain where we'll where we're gonna be, but uh, there just definitely seems to be something going on. And I mean, strange killings. Uh, oh yeah, we got jumped in a library. All right, Hilda's died in a library. I know this seems off topic. Well, However, it's not. It's not really off topic. It was the same day. Yeah, uh, I, I mean. Oh, right. Yeah, we got jumped in a library before the funeral. Again, it's been a very long 24 hours. So, who's attacking you? Guys in weird headdresses. Sure, bearing, the, the symbol. Right? Yeah, sure that symbol. Bearing, uh, bearing the mark of the death cult. The black wind and the bloody tongue and a woman bit off her own tongue. Hmm. That's uh so she flips through her notes like that's what happened to Detective Leahy. They found his body without a tongue as well. Yeah, we saw. Oh, found Were there any of the other of murders stuff. without tongues? Well, <clears throat> you did um uh, Start telling out. You did crash into um, Elias like right after they'd killed him. 
Did we notice if he had a tongue? I don't think we checked. So what I'm saying is like they would not have had time to detongue him. Oh. Uh, what about the other murders? The, the other murders, murders that uh that uh Mr. Adams was uh accused. Accused of, yeah. Uh yeah, she flips through like, huh. That uh that, that was something that a few of them had in common, but not all of them. What were the ones that didn't have it in common? And so she flips through her notes and she says, like, you know what? These might have actually been the decoy murders. These were the ones used to frame Hilton Adams. Hmm. The ones with their tongues. Mm-hmm. Huh. Also, uh, you just might want to contact uh, Lieutenant Poole at the. He's at the Queen's Precinct. Keeper, is that uh, correct? Yes. <clears throat> yes. Yeah, Lieutenant Poole at the Queen's Precinct. I did call him last night to let him know we were framed as well, and he said he was going to try to look into things. Mm-hmm. So maybe he can help you with the proof you're looking for to publish your article. I'll get a hold of him. Thank you. I guess for for everyone's safety, for ours and for yours, perhaps anything that you do find out, you probably shouldn't come directly to us. But our new chap here, uh, Mr. Rip Double P. <laughs> uh, pleased to meet you, sir. Pledge is all mine. Perhaps you uh, could pass on any impertinent or pertinent information to him <laughs> and it can get to us. Yeah, so I assume you exchange information. Mm-hmm. All right. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so is there anything further that you would like to talk to Rebecca about? Uh, you, go ahead. I was gonna, have you been able to set up a meeting with Miss Adams? You know, let me make a couple phone calls. Uh, I will. <clears throat> I think she'll be very interested in what has been happening to you. And so she gives you an address of a um, a theater in Harlem. It says, meet me here tonight. I have the name of that theater, I think. Is that the Lafayette Theater? Mm-hmm. Aha. Okay, well, uh, and then I suppose just for our sake as well, uh, I-, I believe we got some clippings of your writing. Uh, I believe we got some uh, clippings of your writings about the prior expeditions and from my understanding, at some point, uh, Mr. Elias was going to employ us to, to uh, do something similar. But I suppose the more we know what you know about wherever over there may be, maybe some of our answers are over there. Not that I'm exactly dying to go to where people were known to have been killed, but yeah, no. Well, it can't be any worse than here. That's true. true. That's true. So, but again, thank you, thank you very much for uh, for meeting us on meeting us like this. I know a day earlier, day earlier than we were planning to meet. Uh, I guess we should go ahead and just say that uh, Monday's appointment is likely canceled. Uh, yes, I I think we've had um. <clears throat> yeah, and uh, you know, again, you 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 take care, uh, uh, Mister Mister Rip here. Uh, yeah, he'll uh, hopefully he'll be the next person to see you, and it won't have to be us face to face for your plausible deniability. I learned those words recently. 
thanks to Mr. Schwan. Okay. Well, you all take care of yourself. I'll see you tonight. <clears throat> you too. See you tonight. Cheers. Okay. <clears throat> so you've got a couple hours. Hey, Rip. I turn. Exactly how bribable are the are the police officers in this Harlem precinct? Well, I, mean, um, I can tell you that uh, if they catch me with uh, some stock, I give them a little bit. They look the other way. I don't know about uh, much worse than that. Hmm. Specifically, I'm trying to see if we can uh, maybe find a one or two guys that are willing to get our stuff out of uh, evidence. Would I have a you know specific anyone? contact in the cops that uh, I know is readily accepting of getting a little giggle water for stuff? Uh, so... You could probably get uh, some of the belongings back. Uh, you would not be able to get anything that was specifically found in Cliff's room. Damn it. Why is it all my stuff? Damn it. That means I could get my bag back. You can get your bag back. I won't be specific about the bag, though. I will just ask for, you know some of the nicer stuff that was left behind, you know, maybe a handbag for mm -hmm. a lady friend of mine. Basically, I won't be specific about their stuff, just recent stuff happens to fit about the same description so that, you know, they have stuff and probably theirs, but it's not going to mm -hmm. lead directly to me as I want these cop killer stuff. Yeah, yeah, like I said, um, <clears throat> yeah, so, uh, everyone. But, uh, you know, Cliff, with your credit rating as size it is, you can easily replace most of what you lost. I know, but some of that stuff is personal. Mm. Oh, well, such is, such is my luck of 20. So. <laughs> I'm sorry. I no, feel it's fine. fine. Cliff just has bad luck. That's all. Uh, well, not as bad as my roles, but you know. <laughs> sure, sure. <sighs> All right. Okay. So, yeah, I'll be doing that in the interim time frame. I will say to, I will, Rip, there is hard cash involved if they can get, and I described my set of pistols, my set of pistols, only because they have a per I have a personal connection to those. So just on the off chance, there's cash involved. A couple hundred dollars. Not sure how well cops are going to go for uh, me paying out to get a cop killer's guns. <laughs> just put but it out I mean, uh, you never know. Offer them a cut. I'll see, see how much. Uh, I'll see how much. How much are you talking? Cold hard cash. No, oh, I mean a couple hundred dollars. And I pull out like a lot. Like I pull out cash from a bill. I just grabbed the whole entire wad that he had pulled out. <laughs> I'll see what I can manage. I expect that back if I don't get my pistols. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Whatever I can manage. Mm -hmm. All right. Split so it in half. Okay. 
go ahead and give me a fast talk roll, please, Devin. <laughs> oh, yeah, no, that's a bad one. Uh, Yowzers. All right. So you show up at the precinct trying to do like your uh, sweet talk, like, hey, you know, I got, um, you know, my buddies, uh, <clears throat> Benjamin Franklin, really want this gun. Uh, and, you know, normally in your experience, the police are always open to a healthy amount of bribery to get what you want. And this should certainly be enough. But they and uh, they just sort of almost turn on you, uh, and they're doing it in such a way that uh, you can tell. You know, it's it's not necessarily sincere. Uh, they're covering up for something. Covering up for something. Mm. Yeah, like, you know how, like, um, you know, when you accuse someone of lying and they, they actually are lying, they just, uh, you know, the lady doth protest too much, almost. Doubles down. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I'm going to presume that after that, they're not going to be nice about this. So I just say, okay, 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 but uh, I, I'm still looking for some other nice things for, you know, I got a couple lady friends that are coming over, she got a kid, you know, anything uh, in there that's uh, a little bit better than average stuff you might be able to swing my way instead? Yeah, you, you can get Agatha's handbag back and uh, some of the other minor possessions. Uh, you would not be able to, I'm sorry, Cliff, your guns are in lockup. Okay. <laughs> oh, I'll get them back. Don't worry. <clears throat> All right. What would the rest of you like to be doing? What Ooh, time was the uh, appointment with the lawyer? That's, oh, no. Sorry. That's on Monday. Sorry. Yeah, eight, 8 a.m. on Monday. Uh -huh. I think. Um, uh, no specific time, but yes, that is tomorrow. Okay. And Rebecca says that she can arrange for you to meet Millie Adams tonight. Right. right. At the theater. It's still pretty early in the day, though. <clears throat> it is. Uh, where? So... Mr. Elias's, we had the the group, like the sister of the group that was on the former expedition. Mm -hmm. We never were able to get any information on whatever expedition we were supposed to be sent on, right? Like, because we, we never got to actually meet with Mr. Elias. Yeah. Did he ever have any sort of an assistant or anyone that we could have talked to? Uh, he had his lawyer. Oh, uh, the lawyer. Well, we're going to be meeting with him on Monday, too. Okay, never mind. Um, but yeah, there was uh, Erica Carlisle was the sister of Roger Carlisle, which was the expedition that Jackson was investigating when all of this happened. Right. Did you guys got, get his, like, date book? Well, we had everything that he had as far as all of his notes and whatnot, but those were, well, actually, some of them were in my handbag, so we have some of them back. Oh, that is true. I don't remember exactly what was in my handbag, but I know we have some of it. And if if my notebook, or if my if my notebook, if my handbag is still intact as to what its contents had, I would have my notebook and that would have the drawing of the uh, the symbol and then any notes that I had transcribed from the uh, 
can't think of the word. Uh, <clears throat> but yes, you do have those documents back. Is my gun still in my bag? <laughs> Roll luck. Uh, luck. A chance. Success. Yes, you have your gun. Nice. All right. Yay. I will hand that over to Cliff. <laughs> Here you go, Cliff. You got a gun. Thanks. Just kind of put it in my belt, like tuck it behind my back. Okay. So you are not entirely without uh, self defense. Okay. Um, dang, I can't think of what else needs yeah. to be done. I can't. I can't even think of any more leads that we could follow up on. That's fine. <sighs> what about paying this uh, Harlem lieutenant a visit in the middle of the day? Not in the middle of the day. I'm just. What do you think? I kind of want to know why he's got. You know, why he wants to frame us so bad, why he wants us out of the way. Well, I have a good idea. So he was the one who put away Hilton Adams for these murders. Right. And now you have these people, including Lieutenant Leahy, come around and start sniffing, you know, hmm. making the mate, rocking the boat, if you will. And this all goes back to to Mr. Elias as well. The reporter said that he might possibly have evidence that exonerated Adams. So you have us poking around, Elias poking around, Lieutenant Leahy poking around. What better way to take out all of us than killing a cop and framing us? Yeah, but like, true. Just find it weird. Like, does tarnish your reputation a little bit. Nobody saw the detective go into the room or anybody going with them. I mean, we haven't had a chance to go talk to the... We haven't had a chance to talk to anybody in the hotel. And I would imagine that if we did, they would call the cops. Mm. I mean, we could send in our, our, our new friend in. Yeah. All right. Rip, you know anybody? You got any contacts that sell guns? I need more weapons. More weapons? <laughs> Look, I can't get my guns back. I don't know. I'm just, I'm upset about this whole thing. I mean, you can have this and pulls out the <sighs> ceremonial dagger. No, I got, I got my knife. That's just. Uh, you, okay. you, you already got one gun. You want more? Man. Maybe he's look, jealous because you got two. As Alex is like mentioning this and look, pointing the ceremonial dagger around between them. A lot of that stuff can you used to it once. Yeah, I can. But a lot right, of this stuff. I pull out a forty-one guns, revolver and hand it off to you too. A lot of that stuff I collected with my my childhood friend Felix. We worked a lot together. We did a lot of our early explorations together he taught me a lot. So a lot of this stuff has personal value. So I'm a little upset about it all. So I'll get through it. It's just, just, <sighs> this one has cement sentimental value to me too. So don't lose it. I'll try not to. So what now? You tell Man. me. I just came into this god awful mess that you guys are part of. I was gonna say, yes, Rip, Rip, would you mind uh, going and speaking to the uh, people at the Chelsea Hotel? All right. Asking them who came in to see the 
recently deceased? Or, you know what? Why the recently deceased was in that room in the first place? That's Also, did you use all my cash? Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Hold on. Uh, I had to use some of it to get uh, the lady's stuff out. So uh, No problem. No problem. I hand, I hand him half of what he gave me back. Yeah, um, I will give you this uh, without having to do like a whole uh, scene about it. The staff at the Chelsea Hotel, uh, they do not know anything about uh, the murder. Like, they were just as surprised as everyone else to find like, oh God, there's a mutilated corpse in this guy's hotel room. But did they have an approximate time frame as to if they saw him go up like when he entered the hotel. Uh, so weirdly, no one saw him go in or no one remembers seeing him go in. And the last you heard from him, he was being transferred to Jersey. Yeah, we had a we had a message at the uh, yeah, he told us. at the hotel. I was gonna say, can can we you know call the state the precinct and verify? And by we, of course, mean me, since I'm the only one not wanted right now to verify <laughs> that uh, he was, in fact, transferred and that that wasn't just us being told that. Uh, yeah, you call and there is no record of that transfer. And they're like, no, this usually takes like a couple of weeks to happen. Like it doesn't just like no one wakes up and be like, you're going to Jersey. Hmm. And nobody, nobody. All right, so you guys have a dead cop that wasn't transferred that you guys were told. Do we have a, was that a written note to the uh, uh, hotel that said that he was leaving? Like, no, it was a December. phone call? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it was a phone message. Phone message, yeah. And do we have the person who wrote the message? remembering that that happened i would assume that it would have been someone at the front desk yeah and i mean as as far as they know that that's exactly what happened they're like i'm calling for cliff reynolds can you leave him can you take a message and i'll take the message okay okay i'll leave that there so that the cops might actually find it and it's extra proof from them that mm -hmm. they might not have known he was there at all. Okay. Shall we fast forward to the meeting of Millie Adams? Yes. Sure. Okay. Yeah. Unless there's anything else anybody needs to do. Mm, not right now. I can't think of anything. I'm, I've been racking my brain. I can't think. I mean, I want to call. I want to call Lieutenant Poole, but I just have a feeling he's not going to be there. So mm -hmm. I'll wait. Yeah, I mean, you guys have found quite a lot of information. <clears throat> so, oh, am I going to sneeze? Nope, false alarm. Probably not. I'll probably sneeze in like thirty seconds. Anyway, <clears throat> so uh, you make your way to Harlem. And uh, you've done pretty good at the stealth rolls, so I'm not going to make uh, anybody roll again. Uh, and so <clears throat> it is a theater, which is currently closed. Like, not like closed, closed. It's just they're not putting on a show right now. Uh, it is called the Lafayette Theater at 132nd Street and 7th Avenue. And so Millie Adams, she's this uh, fairly well-dressed, a uh, young black woman is waiting in the lobby with Rebecca Schosenberg. And so you come in and Rebecca makes the introductions all around. And uh, you can tell that Millie is a little bit on edge. Uh, she doesn't quite trust you yet, but she doesn't really have a choice. So, uh, who has the worst luck. You know it's me. 
But I'm I have a at, 20 currently. Yeah, I'm at 56. Okay, I would at like 50. the person... At a 42! Woohoo! I would like the person with the worst luck to make a luck roll, please. Nope. Okay. Uh, everyone may now make a spot hidden roll. Uh. Oh, by the skin of my teeth. Hey, I did it with a hard success. That's a, that's okay. a no, no for Agatha. That's a reggie for me. All right. So those of you who made the success, uh, as you are walking past the cloakroom, you see, like, out of the corner of your eye, some of the fabric rustling. Uh, and Alex, you in specific recognize one of the people who had their eye on Juju House the other day. Behind a curtain that was wrestling, like into another room? Yes. Okay. I, uh, with elbow, whoever's closest to me, probably Mr. Reynolds. I, mean, I saw like, it as well, right? Oh, okay, he, he succeeded? Uh, yeah. Yes, those of you who okay. succeeded at the spot hidden will see the, the rustle. Uh, Alex is the person who will recognize them because yeah. of her previous interactions with them. Yep. Do they rec- kinda... do they, did they take a look at us? Did they make eye contact with us at all? No. Okay. Winos, not winos. I'll walk. Out- yeah, the ones outside of the Juju house in the pawn shop. They're in here. I kind of walk past and then we'll like, after we're out of view, I'll try to see if there's a door to get into the cloakroom. Mm-hmm. I'll move, like, I'll just move off. Okay. And then since I know the person's there, I'm just going to bust through the door and like try to tackle them. Okay. Cliff's a little pissed off right now in general oh, so God. <laughs> <clears throat> oh it got spicy <laughs> okay now, so now i know how you guys got charged with murder <laughs> yeah a little bit <laughs> starting to make a little sense here huh <laughs> all right so cliff go ahead and give me um let's see what would be a good one for this straight brawl check Strength, you said? Brawl, please. Oh, brawl, okay. <clears throat> Why do I fail so hard? Okay, so Ugh. you lunge through and you try to catch the guy uh, just as he throws like uh, a big jacket over your head uh, and you hear the womp, 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 womp of someone running away. I, uh, I would have immediately seen him try to, like, run and do that, and would I be able, if I'm following shortly behind Mr. Reynolds, uh, would I have seen them running away, too? Like, from where they are? Uh, because... yes, because you made the initial check, sure. Okay, cool. Um, I would this is derailing everything that we were doing, but sure. It's, hey, you! Yelling at the guy running away. Does he stop? No. He okay. he starts booking it real fast. All right, I'm going to try and point, hoof it like, behind Rebecca him. Rebecca and Millie are like, what? What's going on? I'm going to try and hoof it behind him. Uh, you guys take care of that with the, with, with the missus. Same. I mean, yeah, I'm going to toss this coat aside and go after the guy. All right, so the two of you are giving chase. Uh, what about the other three? I have no idea what they're doing. Okay. <laughs> uh, I didn't I'm see gonna anything. Stay away. I'm, I'm going to stay away from the uh, people that are obviously making themselves even more well-known that are already on, on the lam. So uh, I'm going to stay here and uh, talk. Good it's move. best to lay low in these situations. Okay. 
So, uh, <coughs> all right. So, uh, the two of you wave off Rebecca and Millie and like, no, no, we got this. Uh, whereas I'll be right back. <laughs> okay. I will, however, do a, win- a quick look, see around the area to see if there's any more. I don't know if they're unscrupulous or not because I haven't seen them before, but more unscrupulous people. Uh, yeah, go ahead and give me a spot hidden. Yo. Okay, you do not spot anybody. So. <clears throat> so, so while our compatriots go and handle whatever it is they're going to handle, here we are at this meeting. We're here. We're here to speak about your husband. Uh, Are your friends going to be okay? Uh, she like looks back. Yeah, I think so. Figure out who these guys are. (laughs) All right. I'll tell you what I know, but I need a promise from you. I'm listening is that whatever you learn, you're going to have to do whatever you can to get my husband exonerated. Well, that is the plan. All right. It all started a couple years ago when uh, some of our our friends and neighbors started disappearing. And that's when Hilton formed a group of people to go on patrol, uh, old uh, friends and war buddies, uh, you know, just trying to protect everybody. And so uh, even after the bodies started turning up, the, the police wouldn't do anything. All right. Now, you're going to have to believe me. So there is... It's a cult. There's some sort of death cult operating in the city. Mm -hmm. And I know Hilton tried, he tried to keep me out of it. So he wouldn't tell me anything about it. So I don't know if they even have a name or who is in it. But I'm fairly certain that uh, the Harlem police, at least some of them are members. You don't say. Well, that makes it a little bit more difficult. Yes, and uh, <clears throat> so Hilton was arrested. Uh, they said that they'd seen him kill a man, which I know is not true. But they somehow found his army issue bolo knife that landed it on him. Uh, I guess I will look at Miss Reynolds kind of like waiting for a, an affirmation of the I'm guessing that that information <laughs> was in the police report or in the newspaper or something to that effect. Is, is this all true? At least what is the, the official report? Uh, yeah, Rebecca will, will nod and, and then turn to Millie and like, you can, you can tell them the rest. It's like, all right. I heard one thing one time. Uh, Hilton said he was going to he was going to clean out something called Choo Choo House. It was a couple days later he was arrested. So it seems that Choo Choo House is the epicenter for all of these occurrences. Mm.
And I've been keeping an eye on the uh, art emporium, you know, about once a month, 20, 30 people will show up in the morning, go inside and they'll stay there all day. At the Juju house. Mm hmm. And so she she brings out um, a calendar, and mm -hmm. uh, she has certain days marked, and they are about a month apart. They all coincide with the uh, what moon was it? The new moon. They do indeed. Hmm. When was the last yeah. when was the last date prior to this upcoming to prior to the twenty fourth? What's the last date that she has marked? About three weeks ago. Okay. <laughs> and Did she also I'm sorry? I was going to ask, did your husband keep any notes about his, you know, what he's seen, you know, while he was, while he was doing his watches or his things like that? No, but you can talk to some of his, uh, worthless friends if you'd like. Why do you call them worthless? You know, uh, they should have been there for Hilton, and they weren't. They could have testified, and they didn't. They let themselves be scared off. Scared off, or any of them on the take? No, I don't think any of them are on the take. I just think they're cowards. Mm. They, they, you know, they, they swore they would be brothers forever, but then when things got difficult, they abandoned my husband. Hmm. Anyway, you can find them most evenings after work at Teddy's Saloon, and she'll give you the address. Teddy's Saloon. Yeah, it is. Um, <clears throat> it is a uh, restaurant a couple blocks away, uh, with a nice speakeasy in the basement. Okay. Mm. All right, and while you're doing that, <clears throat> Cliff and Alex, give me a move roll. How do we do a move roll? Wait, how is that thing out of 2D? Wait, I think I clicked something wrong because my move went down. Hmm. Is that the one? Did I click the right thing? Possibly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't know what I, I clicked the thing that said move rate. Mm -hmm. And it has a seven. Well, it had an eight and then it had a seven. Like it changed. Okay, so I made a speed check. Okay. How... Is mine calculated wrong somehow? Did you click I'm one of the sure. one of the boxes on the side? Uh, well, one of them clicked. I, all I I clicked the number. My number says like says seven. It says nine, but it originally had said eight in the middle. Oh, I accidentally clicked on foot, and then I don't know what to do with that. Is speed's not the same as dex, though, is it? No. Yeah. Okay, it's the move rate box. Mm -hmm. Does nine sound correct is the thing? Yes. Okay, all right, so. Okay, so what this means is that Alex, uh,
So what this means is that Alex is the one who catches up to the oh, fleeing sorry. cultist. Sorry. I didn't mean to touch it. That's okay. But you've, you've caught up to him. Yeah, and okay. so, uh, what would you like to do? Would you like to tackle? Uh, or, like, a shirt grab, like, trying to, like, grab onto part of him. Maybe not, like, a tackle, but try and grab hold of the shirt or whatever I can of him. And right. then if he keeps moving, I'm going to try to go for the spider monkey move. Okay. Go ahead and give me a dexterity check, please. Thank goodness. A decent roll. Yes. Okay. So you manage to grab on to the fleeing person's shirt. Uh, and so you have slowed them down, but they now whip out a knife and attack you. Oh. Oh, God. Um, you can try rolling a dodge, uh, but he rolled a three. You can do it. I rolled a one earlier. Okay. Yeah, no, I don't dodge that. Yeah, and so you will take five damage as this guy whips Oof. around and just slashes you. <laughs> All right, my current hit points are down to four. Okay. But this does give Cliff time to catch up. Yeah, I'm going to just, since I'm running at like full tilt, I'm just going to punch him as hard as I can. Or okay. attempt to punch him as hard as I can. All right, give me that brawl. I succeed in hitting him. Okay. Uh, he's going to get a dodge fails the dodge. Alrighty. So, let's see. Seven damage. Okay. So, Jesus. <laughs> you do manage to clock him. And he doesn't go down. Oh. And I suppose we will just uh, turn to the next round of combat. Uh, we'll keep the same order of action. So, Alex, what would you like to do next? Other than cursing uh, heavily in front of them, it's just like we yelled at him just like, why are you following us? Do I have a certain area where I got hit? Like, is that a thing that you choose or just like a... We don't really do hit locations. Okay, um, cool. But yeah, you, you got a pretty big gash somewhere on your person. Yeah, so she's definitely got just like a, why are you following us, man? Just like grabbing at a foot if he's been like, maybe that'll be my move, would be trying to like an arm that's free that's not trying to hold in whatever part of me just got slashed, trying to trip him up with an arm or a leg. Echo. Okay. Yeah, you uh... decked him, but just like, if he's not down, he wasn't down, right? Is no. that what I heard? No, no. He he just got clocked, but he's still up. All right, then I want to take him down by like the knees or something. Okay, go ahead and give me a brawl. Uh, <coughs> hey, she's got it. Yeah. Okay, gonna give him a dodge. Oh no, does not make that. Uh, yes. Yeah. So, and your maneuver was just trying to trip him? Trip him up, get him down. Okay. Uh, yeah, he's now flat on his back, uh, trying to roll away. Uh, so I'm going to give him uh, an athletics check. Let's see, what, what do we have? My friend. Let's give him... <clears throat> okay. So he manages to get back up on his feet, but that takes pretty much his entire turn to do. So he is mm -hmm. not able to attack any of you. Um, and so in the course of tripping him, did you let him go? Uh, no, I think that if I like grabbed him by the ankle, unless he fell like super far away, it would have just been like a grab. 
Okay. Like, yeah. All right. You can tell he's like getting the grip on his knife ready to give you another mm-hmm. stab. And he's going for um, the hand that you have holding him. But again, like, this is what he's going to do his next turn. Next if he turn. gets one, uh, uh-huh. Cliff, it is your yeah. turn. Yeah, I will try to. I'll try to bring myself in close so I can interpose between him and Alex and, like, sock him in the gut really hard. Okay. So, I hit. All right. Oh, but uh, his dodge is better than your brawl. So, he manages to sort of, like, push Alex in front of him as a human shield. <laughs> Darn it. All right. Okay. Alex, what would you like to do next? Oh God. Uh, so I'm being held in front of this guy as a human shield right now? Yes. Uh, I'd like to take whatever hand I have and try and scratch at his face. Okay, give me that brawl. Yes. Scratchy, scratchy. Okay. Oh, he doesn't make that. Yeah, so uh, go ahead and give me uh, your unarmed attack roll. Or uh, uh, damage roll. Two. Okay. <laughs> oh, so you I managed was... to sort of. Yeah. Okay. I'm sorry. Uh, yeah. No, I've got it. It was just. Okay. All right. So you managed to like claw at his eyes, uh, and he shrieks and sort of like spins out wildly. Uh, so you will attack again. You will fail. Oh, to connect. Goodness. All right, Cliff, it is your turn. Yes. Punch him again or attempt to punch him. No. And I'm not spending 19 luck on that. Okay. Well, he does have a uh, very few uh, hit points left. So I'm not going to try nickel and dime both of you. Uh, you do manage to sort of wrestle him unconscious. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So uh, Alex is uh, huffing and puffing and and bleeding from, I guess we'll just say like her arm shoulder-ish area. Uh, And it's just like, it's the guy from there. He's here. He's been in every freaking place. He was the one that uh, Miss Merriweather was trying to throw a pot at. Like this guy's everywhere. Is he wielding the same kind of knife that um, Alex has? Oh, where did you get your knife, Alex? Remind me. I got my, uh, the ceremonial dagger is the one that I got off of the people we fought, uh, the the cultists we fought down in the library. Yeah, the Pranga. Yes, similar knife. The similar knife. My God, it's a freaking death cult guy. (laughs) So yeah, I just kind of pushed that off to the side and since this dude's unconscious, I'm going to tie him up with his own shirt. Like, okay. bind his hands behind his back and kind of just toss him over my shoulder and start walking back to where everybody else is. Yeah. I'm mad. I'm okay. Uh, you are also, mad. Alex, covered in blood. Yes. Bleeding and mad. <laughs> okay. So, back to... Uh, so... Cliff, are you going back to the room where people are talking to Millie? <coughs> yeah. Okay, and you're following Alex? Oh, yeah. Okay. All right, so back to the room with Rebecca and Millie. Uh, is there anything more that you would like to ask Millie? Mm. Mr. Swarm, do you have any further inquiries? Uh, I don't think I do. Uh, uh, I can't think of anything else to ask. Okay. And so then that is when 
a cliff will come into the room with an unconscious person over his shoulder uh, and a very bloody Alex. Holy shit, Alex, what happened to you? This guy. He was the guy outside of the pawn shop. He was the guy you threw a pot at. And he was now in a cloakroom. He's everywhere that we've been. And he stabbed me with a knife that looked like the knife that we got off those goons in the freaking library. And I'm tired of it. What I want to know is I kind of just unceremoniously dropped this guy like a sack of potatoes. Is how this guy knew we were going to be here. Or if he's keeping tabs on... Either Millie Rebecca or Millie. Rebecca or Millie. Well, I suppose that's a question we can ask him when he wakes up. But uh, for the moment, uh, I look at Alex. Uh, anybody want to help patch this kid up? Yeah, so as soon as you came in, both Rebecca and Millie were, like, freaking out. Uh, and, like, Millie has, like, gone off to, like, go find, like, um, first aid. She'll come back in a couple minutes with, like, a couple pieces of, like, torn up shirt. To try and bandage <laughs> Alex with, He's like, what happened? Were did did it look like either one of those were kind of faking their reactions? Um, I'm like I trusting will. no one right now. Okay, that's fair. Uh, go ahead and give me. Let's see. We don't really have sense motive. We do have psychology. Psychology roll? Mm-hmm. All right. I got a 10. Here we go. No. They look totally believable to me. Yep. Okay. My psychology is a 10 as well, but I have a feeling my brain wouldn't... Being bleeding and in pain like that probably wouldn't be the most attentive. <coughs> I have a psychology of 40. <laughs> yeah, mine's 48, but I don't know if I would have been paying attention enough. Yeah, that's fair. I okay. paying attention too much to the kid. Rolling it just in case, but yeah, no. <laughs> so, yeah, the, the guy uh, starts coming around uh, and uh, Millie just loses her shit on him and just starts wailing away with her bare hands like you son of a bitch you've taken my husband from me and I will get my revenge <clears throat> I'll give her a few hits in before I pull her <laughs> away okay ma'am ma'am we, we, we still need him a little bit conscious you can beat him when we're done He's like, you don't understand. He's the reason my husband's in jail, and he's the reason he's about to get electrocuted. And she's just... And if he's dead, we can't get anything out of him to get your husband out. He's not wearing, like, a mask or anything. Like, you can see his face. Yeah, no mask, and he's not wearing the weird headdress uh, that you've noticed some of them uh, uh, else wearing. (laughs) <laughs> but he did stab me with that knife that looked like the knife we got off those weird goons who tried to kill us in the library. But like, M- Millie, do you recognize this man? Uh, he's he's one of the people who, who comes in and out of Juju House. Just making sure we tied him up, right? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Um... While they're kind of questioning, I will try to bandage up Alex, if nobody else has. I uh, if some, I can also try to help myself. I've got like thirty for first aid. Yeah, yeah. Same. Go ahead and roll that. And while they're doing that, I'm gonna check uh, this guy out and see if he has anything on his person that might be extra information for us. No, we both fail horribly. Okay. Uh, recalling past events and not wanting to. Not wanting to have a repeat of last time, not knowing what level of cult member this guy is, Agatha will instinctfully jam something in his mouth while we are not speaking with him. So he okay. cannot bite that thing tongue. Yes. I was wondering if he even had a tongue. 
No, he did because he talked to me. Sure. All right. So you have your bound and gagged cultist. Uh, you have a very angry Millie. And you have Rebecca, who's just taking notes madly in her uh, notebook. Oh, yes. oh, this is good stuff. Yes, mm. it is. <laughs> good stuff, good stuff. And I think uh, a cultist interrogation will be a great way to open next week's show. Oh, yeah. Mm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So uh, thank you all for playing. Thank you to our wonderful audience for watching uh and hang around because we're gonna do some scarred lands draco genesis uh, in about an hour and as always uh <laughs> if you want more vorpal content in your life uh check out we've got uh cult and mythos world on sunday and monday we've got octon which i think wraps up on wednesday Mage the Awakening will also be wrapping up on Thursday, so uh, I have no idea how. Uh, we might end up breaking the world even worse. Uh, should be good times. But for now, investigators, uh, tell the audience uh, who you are, what you're up to, and the next time people can see your face on the interwebs. Well, as always, I am Dwayne. You guys can find me on the internet at Made of Kimchi. Uh, I was playing Agatha Merriweather. Uh, next time you guys will see me will be tomorrow evening playing some D&D 5E in the realm of Runeterra. It would be pretty awesome. Come check it out. Yeah, hello. I'm Kisama. I've been Richard Swan. Uh, you can find me on Twitter at True Kisama. And... You can also find me this Sunday. I believe we are beginning a new D&D 5e campaign in Plangea, where I am running it. <laughs> I'm also going to be here on Tuesday for Black Void and Thursday for the Mage of the Awakening Chronicle. It'll be fun. And hello there. I am Oh Hello Mayor. You can find me on Twitch and Twitter at Oh Hello Mayor. The next time you will see me on the internet will be over on my channel, um, playing some chill games, doing some just chill coffee chatting. Might actually be uh, just doing some weird IRL streams, like come help me make a DD and d campaign for high schoolers. Uh, and then also uh, you will find me next on Vorpal Tales, on Thursday for the Mage the Awakening finale, and then eventually a Changeling <coughs> game, which I don't know words for that game, but we will figure those out sometime. Uh, me, Devin, me, been sort of sullied online. Uh, I've been Rip, two peas, Pelter. And uh, next time you can find me will be in about uh, an hour on this channel. So stay tuned. I am Dave. Uh, you can find me on Twitter at Twin Dead Tweets. Uh, the next time you can see me is tomorrow night over on Carrying Comfort Studios around 8.30ish running my very first dream game, Cyberpunk Red, Displaced and Disorderly. Um, and then you can catch me here again on Tuesday night on Vorpal Tales uh, playing in Black Void. Awesome. Uh, I've been your keeper. My name is Rachel. You can find me Stolen Fires <clears throat> pretty much everywhere on the internet. Uh, I will be here on a Sunday for Cult and then again on Monday for Black Void. Uh, and then on, yes, also Monday, uh, I will be over at Occupational Hazard playing some V5 Sabat. That should also be good times. And then on Thursday, it's not only going to be the finale of Mage the Awakening on Vorpal, but in the evening, I'm going to be running the finale of my long-running Changeling Chronicle. That's going to be happening over at the Onyx Path channel. So, uh, my dance card's pretty full. Follow me on Stolen Fires to find out what I'm up to. Uh, but we are not quite ready yet, because now it is time for votes. Both cast votes and audience votes are worth a luck roll. That means to roll 1d10, add that to your luck score. And so, uh, in the usual order, 
uh, talk about who uh, whose role play you enjoyed, who made your experience a little bit better today. Uh, <laughs> hmm. uh, I am going to vote for Cliff today. Uh, not only did he have a very bad day at losing all of his possessions, some of them being very dear to him, uh, but yeah, I think he was the only one that was like very gung ho about getting shit done. Everyone else is a little standoffish today. I vote this week goes to Rip Two Peas Pelter for just kind of taking us in when we had nowhere else to go and having Kane's worth of booze to just hand out. I was muted, but um, I would like to give my vote today also to Rip. Um, I can see that uh, Alex is probably going to be uh, very much interested in his various skill sets and uh, possible, you know, uh, career pathways that she might be interested in to uh, working into at some point in the future. Moment you get a car, kid, let me know. I don't know how to use a phone, so I'm certain that a car is definitely beyond my skill set. <laughs> Just hit the gas and avoid the cops. I can do the second. <laughs> and uh, I'm gonna give my vo- vote to Alex because uh, you chased a guy, you got stabbed. You need it. Thank you. <laughs> I need the love. All right, and I am giving my vote to Rip uh, as well for, you know, kind of taking in these down-on-their-luck individuals and helping us out so much. Okay. Uh, My vote goes to all of you for continually uh, making me go off script. Uh, I like it. It keeps me on my toes. My vote is not worth luck, however. Uh, it is just worth warm fuzzies and goodwill. Uh, so, with that, uh, have a good evening, and we will see you next week. <laughs> <laughs>